let us understand what is the role of mobile phase pH on the retention of an analyte into reverse phase chromatography. Reverse phase chromatography is one of the most widely used chromatography during the pharmaceutical analysis and that's the reason it is very important to understand how one can manage the pH of the mobile phase to attain the required resolution and the retention. So let us begin with the presentation now. So let us understand, you know, during FAN, one can actually have the pH for the mobile phase. And the answer for this, unless and until you have a ionic compound in your sample, there is no point in having a mobile phase with the pH. So in case if your compound is neutral, right, there is no meaning of having a pH uh, or buffer into your mobile phase because that will not have any impact onto the retention of your analyte. But in case if your analyte is ionic, either weak acid or weak base, then in that situation you will be able to get benefit out of having a pH to the mobile phase. That is the first requirement to set the pH for the mobile phase. Then let us understand, you know, what is the role of the pH of the mobile phase? onto the retention of an analyte and for that we need to also understand the pKa uh, of the compound. We need to understand whether the compound is acidic or compound is basic. So let us assume the given compound is acidic in nature. The given compound is acidic in nature and in case if you know the pKa of the compound and if you adjust the pH of the mobile phase equal to pKa plus 2. pKa plus 2. For example, if the pKa of the compound is 6, right? And now your pH becomes how much? 8. So what is going to happen in this pH in case if your compound is acidic? And you are going to have a predominantly almost 99% of the compound into ionic state. It will be an ionic compound and if the compound is into ionic state now, it is into a highly polar state of the same compound. It is a polar state of the same compound. And please tell me now, if the compound is a polar, right, what is going to happen as per as the retention into reverse phase chromatography is concerned? So let us first understand how the retention gets happen onto the reverse phase chromatography. See, the reverse phase chromatography is what? It is a non-polar stationary phase and a polar mobile phase. The stationary phase is non-polar in case of reverse phase chromatography. So, what is going to happen of the polar compound onto the non-polar stationary phase? Will non-polar stationary phase retain the polar compound or it will not retain the polar compound? And for that reason, we must understand the law of like attracts like. The law of like attracts like. So non-polar stationary phase will attract the non-polar compound. The polar stationary phase is going to attract the polar compounds. Now in this case, our stationary phase is non-polar but the compound is polar and hence there will be no much interaction, attraction of polar compounds onto the non-polar stationary phase. And because of that, the polar compound will not retain onto the non-polar stationary phase. Okay, and hence it will elute very early. It will elute very early into the chromatographic run. So this is how the retention of an acid with the pH of the mobile phase, right, equal to pKa plus 2 is going to happen. Let us take another situation now where you are going to adjust the pH of the mobile phase equal to pKa minus 2. So what is the pKa of our compound? Do you remember that? It was 6, right? So the pKa minus 2 becomes now 4. So you are adjusting the pH of mobile phase by my 2 unit less than the pKa value. And in this situation, your compound, your acidic compound is predominantly will be into a non-ionic state will be into a non-ionic state and as it is a non-ionic compound you know it will be less polar or hydrophobic in the nature it is a less polar compound or non-polar compound now so 
Do you remember the law of like attracts like? Non-polar stationary phase attracts non-polar compound. And in the same case, our compound is now non-polar. And hence, this stationary phase is going to attract this non-polar compound. And because of this attraction, you know, adsorption, desorption phenomenon, the compound is going to retain for longer time onto the stationary phase and hence, you will be late into the chromatographic run. Will you look late into the chromatographic run? So this is the way you know you can manipulate the retention of a weak acid, right? By adjusting the pH less than its pKa value or more than the pKa value. So if you keep the pH of the mobile phase more than its pKa, right? Then the compound is going to elute very early. If you keep the mobile phase pH less than its pKa value, then the compound will retain for the longer time and you look late into the chromatographic run. So this is how the retention of an acid get happen with the change of the mobile phase pH. Let us now learn how the retention of a basic compound gets impacted and let us understand that the pH equal to pKa plus 2. So let us adjust the pH of the mobile phase equal to pKa plus 2. So assume that the pKa of the compound is again 6, right? The pKa of the compound is again 6, but it is a weak basic compound now. So in case of pKa plus 2, right, in case of pKa plus 2, the pH will become now 8. 6 plus 2 becomes 8. So in alkaline pH, the basic compound will never get dissociated and hence it will be predominantly unionized predominantly unionized and you know that if the compound is unionized it is less polar compound non-polar compound hydrophobic compound and the hydrophobic compound retain for longer time onto the reverse phase stationary phase and hence it will retain for longer time and you look late into the chromatographic run so in case if the ph equal to pka minus 2 now it is a weak basic compound the p the pa ph is uh, so 6 minus 2 becomes 4 on the acidic side and the basic compounds will dissociate into acidic pH. It will become the more polar, you know, predominantly ionized compound and the ionized compound is nothing but the polar compound. If the compound is into polar form, right, it is not going to have interaction onto the non-polar stationary phase and because of that it will elute early into the chromatographic run. So this is the way the acidic compound or basic compound can have a different retention based on its based on to the change into the pH. So let us take an example which is really very interesting, uh, which will help us to understand further. You know, to have this firm understanding about the uh, the change into the retention time, as per as the uh, the pH is concerned. So. On your screen, there is an example onto the top chromatogram. This chromatogram is uh, run with the low pH value. Okay, maybe let us say pH 2. And the lower chromatogram is having the pH of mobile phase equal to high means towards alkaline, let us say pH 8 or 10. Now, there are total number of 13 compounds present into a sample. Okay, and these are the name of the compound. You can read this name to the into the box right side top. And these compounds, if you look at the first chromatogram, the top chromatogram, the peak number 6 comes first and the peak number 11 comes at the late. Now this is at the low pH. This is at the low pH. So having understood the theory of uh, how the retention happens, you know, into the chromatographic run, this is a reverse phase chromatography. As this sixth compound is coming very early in the chromatographic run at the low pH into the acidic pH. So what should be the property of this compound? What should be the property of this compound? It is coming very early means it will be into a polar form. This compound must be into a polar form into the acidic pH. So which compound will have a ionized form into the acidic pH? And that's the basic compound, right? And hence the sixth compound must be a basic compound. And that's the reason it is coming 
eluting early into the chromatographic run. Similarly, the 11th compound, 11th compound uh, is eluting very late. So let us understand now what is the uh, uh, the nature of uh, the order of uh, uh, elution into the high pH. So here is the example. So in case of the high pH, the compound number two eludes very early, right? And it is a basic pH, and hence it must be a acidic compound. Okay, so this is the, the first level information. Now having two chromatograms in your um, in front of you, let us compare these chromatograms and try to understand why there is a shuffling change into the retention time of the few compounds. So let us understand which compound did not have much change into their retention times. And you will find that compound number one. See, look, in low pH, and high pH, the compound number one has no much uh, change into the retention time. Similarly, the compound number seven, it has not changed. Then compound number 10, there is no change into the retention time of the compound number 10 as well. And 11, it is actually the same. So you can understand that as there is no change into the retention time of these four compounds, compound number one, seven, and 10, and 11, this compound must be a neutral compound because they do not have any influence on to the change of the pH of the mobile phase. This is first inference you can draw from these two chromatograms. Now let us understand what is happening with the compound number uh, 2. This compound number 2 is eluting at around what time? It is 5 minutes but now eluting very early at around 1.5 minutes into the high pH, low pH Mobile phase, the compound number two is eluting uh, at around, let us say, five minutes. But now the same compound is eluting very early into the alkaline pH. That indicates that this must be an acidic compound. So which compounds have eluted early into the alkaline pH? It is compound two, three, uh, and then the four and the five. So these compounds, they have a good amount of retention into the low pH mobile phase, right? This compound have the good amount of retention onto the low pH mobile phase. Now what they would have happened to elude early into the alkaline pH? Because they must have gone into a ionization state and hence they must be an acidic compound. They must be an acidic compound. So the compound number 2, 3, 4, 5 must be acidic compound. Similarly, uh, let us understand you know, what happens to the peak number 6, compound number 6. It is eluting very early into the low pH mobile phase, but it is retaining for a good amount of time into the high alkaline mobile phase. This means, you know, this compound must be a basic compound. So in the same way, the compound number 8, 9, 12 and 13, right? As uh, these compounds are eluting little late as compared to the low pH mobile phase, they must be a weak basic compounds. So, Based on this, you can understand you know, how the neutral, acidic and basic compounds retention get governed with the change of the pH of the mobile phase. This is really very important to understand because this will help you a long way in developing a suitable uh, you know, HPLC method in your case. I hope now you must have understood how important it is to manage the pH of the mobile phase to achieve desired uh, retention or the resolution. So thank you very much for watching this video and I will meet you soon with such kind of informative and useful video. Till then, take care and bye-bye. See you soon.